watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television! Yay! Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, I'm happy to welcome back Maureen Hazley Jones, the English lady. And she is going to share with, share with us some things that we can still do in our garden, even though fall is in full force. Maureen, welcome back. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm delighted to be here. I love fall. I don't know about you. I mean, just the smell of the earth and, you know, the lovely leaves and, and everything else. And there's plenty to do in the garden. You know, you mentioned that you thought, oh, we don't have enough. Yes, then, I feel like the clock is ticking no, on our gardening love, no, time. <laughs> no, June was a washout, as we say, literally. Yes, yes. But, um, but, but we definitely have plenty of time, you know, through until the middle of, uh, of November, especially to do with planting bulbs. But there's right. absolutely plenty to do. However, that wet weather did cause a bit of trouble. So what, what, what is the residual from that? What, do, is there anything special we need to do because of it? Yes. Or, okay, yeah, yeah, so talk yeah. about that a Well, little really, bit. it means taking a nice walk around your garden or your vegetable garden. And um, the wet weather encouraged lots of fungus you yes. know, and disease. So does the fungus look like sort of... Um, grayish stuff on the leaves. That's one of the, one okay. of the things. That's like a mildew. Yes, which is like a, a mildew, yeah, right. Yeah, well, that's a fungus, mm -hmm. and it's airborne. However, there are um, thousands and thousands of fungi and other diseases that have descended on our garden, as well as all of the insects, mm -hmm. and of those, those little critters that are below ground, too, mm -hmm. the moles. So the thing to do is walk around the garden, take, cut down any disease plants that you have, and you okay. not, don't put them in the compost pile, put them in, in a garbage uh, bag and throw them away. And, um, so cut them down? Yeah, to, to about six inches from the ground. Okay, so all and the moldy foliage. All the moldy disease, stuff, yes. Whatever, okay. Um, and then any foliage or whatever that's fallen on the ground, mm -hmm. gather all of that up because a clean garden is a healthy garden. Mm -hmm. And put that in, in, in a bag, you know, get rid of any of that kind of stuff. Okay. And, you know, just you know, check around and, and make sure that, uh, that, that all looks A-OK. -okay. And then one of the wonderful things to do is um, re-edge, you know, a nice clean edge on Edging a Edging seems like an endless battle to me. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it, I, it's I do it in art. the spring, and then at the end I'm like, oh, i got to do it again in the it, fall. So it just, that's just a normal... It's a normal thing, yeah, yes, it the is. The grass and just it, likes it, to come in. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. an art, too. And mm -hmm. you have to make sure you get a nice, have a nice clean cut at an, an angle, you know, a nice angle in there. And um, it does take time, mm -hmm. I must admit. It definitely does take it time. It counts as a workout, I've decided. Oh, yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, again, m my favorite stuff in the world, manure. Mm -hmm. Put down, you know, at least an inch on all of your borders. And then, particularly, I mean, you may have plants that have been in the ground a long time, so you may not need to mulch everything. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, although it's nice to have the look, um, but you, okay. but definitely mulch um, plants that you planted, for instance, later on in the summer, or okay. if you have planted, for instance, evergreens in September, because evergreens are shallow rooted. That's why mm -hmm. you can't plant them any later than September. And, uh, so no one should be planting evergreens now. No, not, not at in all, October. No. no, done. Okay. No, September is the only time. Shallow rooted, um, they need the time to, to establish before December, January comes. And in the planting hole, of course, with, um, with uh, you know, the evergreens, you mm -hmm. would have put some peat and some, some manure. If you didn't, you can put some around the base of the evergreens now. And then some mulch to keep those roots nice and warm. So if you're, if you're a little overwhelmed, I tend to get a little overwhelmed with the continue, like the edging and the the manure and the mulching, and it just seems like it's a constant to-do. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you could maybe save a little bit of time mulching by 
concentrating on the new plants, the new plantings, if, you, well, like if, if you're you, short if, of time. If, yes, or, or if you didn't or put them any new plants in this mm -hmm. season, too, you may not even want to mulch. Okay. You know, but, but the manure is important. The manure is important three okay. times a year. You know, April, um, like June, July, and then again September, October. Okay, so because don't skimp on the manure. Don't skimp on the manure. It's not a fertilizer. And of course, you would not fertilize anything at all in the, uh, in the fall. Everything is going to sleep, just like the, we like to hibernate mm -hmm. and the animals like to hibernate in, in the fall and winter. So don't feed anything. But manure is building that soil structure so that next spring you've got a wonderful, rich planting mm -hmm. environment for, any, uh, for your stuff that's in the ground and for any new uh, new things that you're going to pop in. So you should not, you, you shouldn't even feed trees or anything no. like that in the fall? Nothing no. should be fed Nothing in the fall? No, nothing should be fed. Nothing. The only thing that you would feed would be hand, house plants that you had outside, you've okay. taken in, you've repotted, and you give a dilute application of an organic fertilizer. Okay. And then let them uh, you know, do their thing over okay. the winter. So a definite no-no is feeding. Right. But a definite yes is manure. Yes. And possibly mulch. Yes. And then trimming out all of the yuck that came all with the weather All of the yuck, yes. Summer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely all of the yuck. And of course, you may have some broken branches on shrubs mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and trees too, so you can cut those off. Whenever, though, you're pruning, make sure that you use a sharp tool. Okay. You know, you, you don't want to tear anything, because if you tear, um, you can get disease setting in, 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 in the teared situation. It okay. would be like, an, you know, an injury. So it's important yes. to have good good tools. tools. Very important, okay. yes. Okay. So pruning is okay? Yes. Anything you shouldn't prune? Or uh, what rules for pruning other than don't tear? Well, um, you like, really wouldn't want to be pruning too much in the fall. Not too much. No, okay. not too much in the fall. Um, rule of thumb particularly would be um, like anything that's flowering, you mm -hmm. know, any flowering situation, like lilac or, um, you know, rhododendrons, mm -hmm. azaleas, um, the flowering viburnums, any of those you prune right after they've bloomed mm -hmm. in the spring. And, uh, you know, just you go in and, and you do it so that you, you preserve the shape of the tree or the shrub too, right. so that it looks wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anything that's damaged or dead, you can get oh, yes. thrown off. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Most, but the other, there's one other thing I just thought of. I mentioned uh, lilac. Yes. Um, you know those suckers that come up from the bottom? Yes. Yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you have them, do you? We love? do. We've actually right. successfully transplanted them, though. Oh, which good. I was, And they bloomed the very next year, which I didn't expect. That's unusual. Yeah. yeah you I guess did it, it was right. hardy. I don't know. But, so what were you going to say to uh, you about you those? You cut those suckers off in November. Oh, That's okay. That's when you cut those off. Okay. Otherwise, you know, for instance, your butterfly bush, mm -hmm. um, the blue mist shrub, um, any of your ornamental grasses, mm -hmm. you leave up for the... I mean, they're lovely, the ornamental yes. grasses, aren't they? Even with, when with, they're dead, they're yeah, beautiful. Yeah, with the yes. icicles on in the winter. Mm -hmm. it's, it really is lovely. Yeah. And um, uh, so you leave those up. You don't take those down until the end of March, beginning of April. You okay. Know, the butterfly bush, the blue mist shrub... Um, what about perennials? Do you cut those down? Like dead, um, I have some cone flowers that are pretty much dead. No. Leave them up. I leave all my okay. perennials up for the winter. I don't know about you, but I like the, um, you know, the, the pale greens and the yellows and mm -hmm. the browns because that's the color of winter. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is soft and gentle and uh, kind of sleepy. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only that, you're leading, leaving those seed pods up for the birds. Yes, and yes. also I have found we have some um, perennials that will reseed themselves. Mm -hmm. So if the birds don't get them, you get them. <laughs> you get some extra some, plants, possibly. Like, like Rebecca, I think, I'd have the black-eyed Susan. Isn't that Re Rebecca? Yes, it is. Those have spread from their because I just left the pods. Unfortunately, um, though, you, you, I'm glad you brought up... Uh, okay, uh-oh, what did I do? I did no, something wrong. No, no, <laughs> there's, no, there's no such thing as wrong in gardening. I mean, failure is part of gardening. Yes, that's true. And gardeners love to, love to talk about failures, you know, and, and they uh -huh. learn from one another. Right. But black-eyed Susan, because they are so prolific, I mean, they yes. really are promiscuous, they, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's pr they're pretty right. much spreading oh, all yeah. over. Yeah. However, your best bet would be to take the seed pods off your, uh, your black-eyed okay. Susan. Because all of those that are coming up, mm -hmm. they're not, number one, they're not strong. 
you know, they're not as vibrant as the original lot that you put in. Okay. And you really don't need to have black-eyed Susans, you know, yellow in every corner of the garden. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. Well, where yeah. mine are, they're, I'm kind of glad they're spreading. Oh, all right. Um, but they're not in the main garden area. All they're right. kind of on okay. the side, which is nice that it's filling Well, they're in, also a wildflower. Right. I mean, they're yes. growing kind of like a wildflower, yes. which, is, yeah. which is good. But if you don't want that, mm -hmm. then definitely cut the seed pods exactly. out. Exactly. Because they will take over everything, yeah. is what Same you're saying. Same with poppies, too. You know, there are many different seed heads you, mm -hmm. you take off, and, uh, and irises, too, because um, you want to keep the plant itself nice and strong, mm -hmm. and you don't want, you know, the, the, the goodness going into the seed pod that should be going down into the roots. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, you had said lilacs in November, you can cut the suckers if you don't want it to continue to spread. And that also makes the main stem stronger, right? Oh, yeah, By you would take the, the suckers, suckers off stem. anyway. Does yes. that include forsythia? Because isn't for this forsythia kind of the same family as lilac? It is, but you wouldn't, uh, you, you, again, after it's bloomed is when you would cut back forsythia. Okay. All right. Although in the winter, you can cut back some of what I call the old, thick uh, stuff. Mm -hmm and some of the weaker, um, you know, young shoots. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do that so that the plant has a better chance right. for next spring. Right. Yeah. So it's not really pruning, it's more selecting exactly. out. Exactly, right. So that would go for lilac. Thinning out Thinning a it bit. out as well as Yes, yes, forsythia. definitely, yes. Okay. Our forsythia is really happy this year. I mean, it's unbelievable, mm -hmm. the shoots that are coming out oh, of yeah. that forsythia. Again, all the rain. Holy yes. cow. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it, I mean, it's almost prehistoric how big this thing has gotten. <laughs> It's right next to the driveway, too, oh. so it's like, oh, i got to cut that back again because it you know, scrapes your car as you go by because mm -hmm. it's coming over the driveway. It's, it's crazy. I My know. husband's not a gardener, so he's like, now, what is that, and why does it keep growing so big? <laughs> because it, 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 it's, it's in the ground. It will continue to grow, tell yeah. him, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's obviously living. happy. Yes. It's in a happy, happy oh, good. spot. Good. So let's talk a little bit about um, the bulbs because I think I, when I think of fall gardening, I think of putting in bulbs. You read my mind, because that's what I, I, mm -hmm. I was hoping you'd bring up next. Um, I'm hoping that everybody's got their bulb order in now. Okay. And when, what if you don't? Well, um, if you don't, if you don't, you know. You may not get your pick of what you want. Well, maybe. yes. Yeah, it yeah. gets a little, <laughs> a little thin. Okay. But you can also go to uh, many of the garden centers. They're mm -hmm. only, 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 well, some of them haven't even got in their, their bulbs mm -hmm. yet. Okay. Um, go, when you uh, choose your bulbs, for instance, daffodils, you mm -hmm. don't have to get large ones because okay. they just multiply in size and they reproduce anyway through the years. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to pay a lot of money for large daffodil bulbs. But I would suggest getting early, mid-season and late-blooming daffodils. Okay. This way then you have a succession of bloom in the spring. Also make sure that the bulb is firm and that it is dry. And if you can't plant when you get home, um, obviously you wouldn't plant now, you might get them now or in October. The mm -hmm. best time to plant bulbs is the end of October, uh, okay. first two weeks of November. You know, okay. so, so that would be in, um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I've just, just realized you we're taping this earlier, aren't we? Yes, yes. <laughs> it is actually September. Yeah, yeah but it is, first day of October. fall. Right, right. right. It's right. the first day of fall, that's right, that's it is. That's it, that's right. Um, but so anyway. when you, so at the end of the month, at the end of October, end of October, beginning, beginning of, November of November is really when, best. Yes, and okay. then the thing to do too is, um, have a nice, for instance, if you want to do uh, tulips, by the way, I, I, I always um, use tulips as annuals because the second year, they're never as good. Do you Except, dig them up or do you just leave them in? You can leave them in or there's no reason to. Or, okay. I mean, you can take them up. Uh, or the parrot tulips do well for a number of years. Okay. However, um, daffodils, don't, don't p pl plant them in a row, you know. Not like soldiers. Okay. You know, do a nice big trench, like three to four feet long uh -huh. and, and wide and at least nine inches deep. Okay. Because the plant, the, the bulbs need to be beneath uh, the frost line. And then okay. throw the bulbs in and then you'll write them, turn them up so that they're, you know, the, the pointy end is up. Is that you for know, all bulbs? You are all, all, okay. all, for all bulbs, yes. Okay. And um, forget about when people say, oh, they'll all come up to the light because many of them, you know, they won't. You so know, they would just They need to be pointed there. up, yeah, yes, okay. exactly. And okay. you'll use um, bulb food 
mm -hmm. um, or bone meal is very okay. good. You know, sprinkle that in the in the hole with them. Do you them. put that in before you put the bulbs in or after? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. It really doesn't. Just a mixture of the right, bulb food right, and the right. bulbs. Okay. And um, but wear gloves. You can get a nasty rash from. Um, from particularly daffodils, well, and tulips. Okay. Wear, wear gloves whenever you're planting bulbs because okay. there's, a, there's, a, there's a substance that causes, you know, real irritation. Skin irritation. Yes, okay. it does. Um, with tulips, they are the um, caviar of the rodent family. See, I have to say, I haven't planted tulips in years right. because we have lots of deer. And I, I just don't want to spend all the time and then have them be eaten. Um, right. So do you have a tip on maybe how to protect them from the yes, deer? Yes, yes. Okay. Number one, when you dig the holes, um, you know, say you're going to do a nice swath of red tulips. Again, okay. do a nice f splash of color, not a whole mixture. Mm -hmm. If you do a nice splash, it's a really good look, you know, for the garden. So design-wise, you're saying it's better to go to pick a color theme versus exactly. doing a whole random mixture. rainbow yes, of yes. things. Okay. Because otherwise it, you don't get the benefit of you know, full, full okay. impact. Okay. Um, and um, line the hole, you know, line the hole with, with like a, a fine mesh chicken wire. Okay. At the bottom of the hole, spread some gravel. Okay. I mean, you're really setting up a nice fortress there against these creatures, <laughs> you know. So if you dig the hole, right. line it with chicken wire. Right. So even if you have a trench, you just line the trench with the with chicken, chicken wire. With chicken wire, okay. right. And that stops, you know, Mr. Mole coming in kind okay. of thing. Okay, so that prevents the moles. Right, All and right. also the, the um, uh, gravel on the bottom. Okay. And then the other thing is when you get the tulip bulbs home, mm -hmm. if you soak them in an organic deer repellent and then let them dry in the sun, this will keep the, those creatures away too. Interesting. Yes, so yeah. any organic deer repellent. Yes. 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 Okay. It, and it your will. website has recommendations yes, on those it does, products. Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. As well as deer resistant plants as well too. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah so definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then you put the bulbs in. You mm -hmm. put the gravel in. You put the bulb food. You, do you put dirt over the gravel before you put the bulbs in? You can do. Yeah. It, do you need to or not really? No, not really. The no. bulbs don't care if there's no because dirt what will happen? No, because no, because the, the roots are going to go through the gravel anyway. Okay, so it's just a thin layer of yes. gravel. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple of kind inches. of like you're lining a pot. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Then you put the bulbs in. You put mm -hmm. the food in, and then you just do you put. Just topsoil? Do you put a mixture of topsoil and manure? What do you put on top? Just it the never hurts to put manure in okay. this, with, with it as well, too. But just and the ground you dug up right, is fine. Right, right. And then, and then okay. give them a nice, you know, give the, the area a nice watering okay. until the ground freezes. And then they'll come up for you in the spring. Okay. When they come up for you in the uh -huh. spring, when the um, foliage is about four inches high, um, and it's the same with any of your perennials, actually. That's when you can add a little more bone meal around the base of the, uh, um, or bulb food around the base of, of, okay. of the bulbs. So of the even bulbs. before it's, so this would be before it bloomed. Be before Feed it, it bloomed, yeah, because, okay. it, because what will happen is, um, as I've always said to folks, don't, don't plant daffodils in your lawn if you know that you, you won't be able to stand the sight of those yucky yes, yellow leaves. Yes, you're supposed to leave the leaves until you leave they the really leaves. die, aren't exactly. you? Okay. Because all of the goodness is going into the bulb for next mm -hmm. year. So, uh, yeah. Okay. But for tulips, you're saying you don't really keep the tulips around, so you can just take right, them out when they're right. done. Yeah. Well, that's they aren't going to really re No, it's, not, it's never the same. Yeah. Never the same. Okay. Right. I was thinking, I... Um, I'm inspired by this idea of the deer-resistant tulips, mm -hmm. but I, and I was thinking, you know, sometimes you plant bulbs and it's still cold when they come up, you know, like daffodils come mm -hmm. up and it's still kind of right, cold, so you're right. not really out in your backyard uh -huh. as much, maybe, there might right. still be some snow or whatever. So I was thinking maybe, do you suggest picking places that you can see outside your windows since you're still Excellent a lot idea. of times oh, yes. inside? Oh, yeah. And so. sometimes, too, you'll get a, a mild spell Mm -hmm. you know, in the early spring, and the bulbs will come up and people say, oh, they're going to get killed. They won't. They'll be absolutely They'll be fine. fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely That's fine. That's an exciting time, isn't it? Oh, yes. When you start seeing the, the crocuses and things start right, popping up. Right, right. Yeah. But you can still have um, daffodils inside in the winter, the pa paper white narcissus. Okay. Right. Now how, how do you do that? Well, what, what I do is... Um, uh, so these are the bulbs that you buy in the fall? Yes, these are the okay, bulbs so you, you buy in the fall. Yeah, yeah, the, the uh, paper white narcissus. Mm -hmm. And I lay mine in a, in a shallow bowl of, of pebbles. Okay. Or I actually have some very tall glass vases mm -hmm. because the, the, the narcissus get tall. 
and to, st to save any flopping, the side of the vase mm. stops them flopping over. Mm. What you do is you, you place them in the pebbles and secure them. You, f you water the pebbles, put them in a dark room, dark, cool room okay. or cupboard. And then as soon as they start to show uh, roots, which is in about three to four weeks, you can bring them out into a low light uh, for another few weeks and then uh, bring them out into your... Uh, you know, put them on the table, window. right? Oh, wow. And what I do actually love, w when the paper white narcissus come into the, into the uh, garden centers, they mm -hmm. go very fast. Mm -hmm. So I buy about three or four dozen, and I put them in the refrigerator, like in the, in the vegetable mm -hmm. keeper at the bottom, and I plant up like about 12 at a time. Oh, and so you then can do it over time. I have a succession of bloom through nice. the winter. It I works. Like that. Yes. So you can have a little garden inside. Exactly. And also you can do the same with um, with herbs too. If you really? want to yeah. Parsley, dill, basil, you know, little pots right by your kitchen window there. So just so as long as they're getting a lot of sun. A lot of sun, mm -hmm. you feed them with an organic liquid fertilizer, keep them watered, and you'll have those fresh herbs during the winter. How frequently do you feed them? Weekly? Monthly? Um, Mm, I'd say every couple of weeks. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You don't want to overfeed so them. So the key is just lots of sun. Right. Right. Okay. And then you can have them. And in the keep pot. them moist. Yeah. I had um, a friend ask me about. This goes back to the summer that we had. This that we just were coming out of. Um, right. The tomato blight. Yes. Uh, are we? What do we do? In in my September show, we went to a farm and they were devastated by the tomato blight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things they said they were doing is taking the plants out and really destroying them, not yes. putting them, not mulching them or composting them back no, into the soil. No, no. Um, is that just the best thing you can do is just get rid of anything that had the blight? Are you we, can do that. Yeah. You can do that, okay. definitely, love. But um, it, it's also soil-borne is the trouble. Yeah. Uh, so one of the best, particularly people who have vegetable gardens, mm -hmm. one of the best soil uh, cleaning uh, things to do is to plant, um, now, like now in, in October, a late crop of potatoes. Really? Potatoes clean the soil. Interesting. And it really helps, and they'll okay. absorb a lot of this, the, the problems in the soil, so too. So if you suffered from that in your home garden, right. you would want to try and put some potatoes right. in. Right, right. Okay. Also, um, in the veg garden, too, um, if you're turning over your veggies... Mm -hmm. Just now let's talk about cleaning up the veg garden a little yes, bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, let's do that. If, you know, if you've got some leftover veggies in mm -hmm. there, you know, uh, chop it down a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let the veggies get to be, you know, too thick and woody, because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll the really stems. need to yes, mm -hmm. uh, chop it up. Turn the veggies into the, into the soil, but only go down about six inches. Okay. Okay? And then, of course, add some manure. Mm -hmm. And in the... Um, um, what was I thinking? I'm having, I don't say a senior moment anymore. I say I'm having intellectual overload. <laughs> <laughs> Too many so, goodies in there. Oh, that's it. That, <laughs> definitely. But anyway, so um, if so you... So you're turning the things over into the soil. Right. What if you don't have... If you don't have... Mm -hmm. Right. I'm glad you prompted me on that, love. Um, if you don't have... A, a plant a cover crop. Okay. And you what know, is a cover crop? An, a, it, it's like... A cover crop would be alfalfa, buckwheat, okay. clover you know, mm -hmm. and um, you'd plant that now in October. If you have clay soil, that, that cover crop will come up in about uh, four to six weeks. You would turn that in in early December, you know, because okay. clay soil, you know, it, it, the, the crop would not do well left over the winter in clay soil. It would just be a, a okay. lousy Cause mess. A, a yes, mess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. If you have regular soil, um, you wouldn't turn that until... Um, turn the cover crop until the spring. The spring. Right. I think a lot of West Hartford has a lot, has clay. Ah, all right. I, I've heard. I know okay. my, my garden is very clay. Well, a lot of so the, yeah. So you would just want to be mindful of whether it is or isn't. Well, a lot of the that. areas where, where our team works, too, mm -hmm. in West Hartford, we found that as well. Yeah. And um, yes, yes. In fact, our team will be going and doing, the, the other thing that's good to do in the, um, in the winter is um, uh, stonework. You know, you yeah. can do stonework. Is there yeah. any time where it just is too cold? I mean, I guess once it's covered yeah, what in the you snow, do, <laughs> you, can't, well, yeah. you can't really build well, anything in the snow, but... No, um, you're right. Through December, right. probably? Yeah, even Depending through, on how Yeah, into the January, winter. yeah, if you haven't... Because as long as you get your base down, you mm -hmm. know, a nice eight-inch base with gravel down there for either a wall or a patio, you know, you're fine. 
Absolutely so you can fine. take care of your plants as well as the structure that's yes. surrounding your garden. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because if you built a patio or a stone wall, you know, in the winter, it will be all ready for you to plant around in the spring. Right. Yeah. Which is nice. Yes. It's nice yes, to it feel like nice. you're accomplishing oh, something. Yes. Um, I had asked you this question, moms, that yes. we, these are from, you know, garden center. Right, right. And I had asked you, can you take these and put them in the ground and have them come back as perennials. Right, right. And your answer was? They, um, no. <laughs> they've, been for, they've been forced, unfortunately. Okay. So any plant that's been forced really is? Well, some, some are better than others, okay. you know. So instead of leaving them in the pot when you bring mm -hmm. them home, um, put them in the ground where you can see them outside. Okay. You know, put them in mm -hmm. the ground, again, put your manure around them. Mm -hmm. And then when they finish blooming, this is one plant that you would cut down. You know, okay. yes, you okay. cut that one down because this is very, um, as I say, it's been, it's been forced. So this mm -hmm. is a, uh, what I call tender. Okay. So you cut that down to about six inches, mm -hmm. you know, and, and mulch around it. And many times you, you, you're lucky. It might come back. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, one year I had a mom that I put in a, it was a large container, but mm -hmm. it was a container. And, right. you know, everything died over the winter. And in the spring it started coming back. Now, I tried to move it and put it in my garden, and it has yet not really exactly. done exactly. much. So I think right. Right. you're right. <laughs> but it did. It tried to come back. It just, I didn't do anything to it. Right, so. right. Um, I'm trying to see if we've, if we've covered everything. I was oh. thinking about frost. Frost, Sign yes. of frost. Yes. Okay. Okay. If you, um, the sign of frost, for instance, um, take a, a, um, a plastic bag, like mm -hmm. from Stop and Shop or wherever it is, or Whole mm -hmm. Foods, um, and hang it from the branch of a tree. Okay. If, it's, if there's a clear sky and um, there is very little wind, mm -hmm. that means that you won't get frost that night. Okay. But if, it's, if the temperature seems to be lowering and the clouds are lowering and the wind is quite brisk and this uh, plastic bag is really flapping, flapping in the breeze, around. That means frost coming that night. So you'd either want to, say you've got some plants you recently planted, mm -hmm. um, you know, cover with um, uh, like uh, salt hay or mulch or um, an old blanket or newspaper, okay. you know, just to be... So uh, that's the signal to protect... Exactly, your, exactly. The things that are still right, tender. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Maureen, if our viewers want to see, to learn more, or to, to brush up on some of the things we talked about, your website is the source? Absolutely, theenglishlady.com. Theenglishlady.com. Um, it's also a blog, so you can send me any questions, and I get to them within a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Okay. And the team, you know, we, we'd love to hear from any, because everybody deserves a garden, mm -hmm. you know. It, it's your spot to relax in this stressful mm -hmm. world. And it can be, you know, just a small patio garden or whatever size. And we're, we're willing to do it in, uh, you know, whatever way you want it done. Okay. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. So if you have any questions for Maureen that we didn't talk about tonight, um, you can go to the website, www.theenglishlady.com. Um, I also have recently joined Facebook with Life and Style with Sarah. So if you have any questions for me um, or want links to theenglishlady.com or any of my other guests, um, you can find me on Facebook. I would love to hear from you. Um, thank you so much for watching this evening. And until next month, um, be inspired to go out in the garden. Absolutely. Plenty and of time. don't forget to tune in to a brand new episode of Life and Style with Sarah next month. Thanks and good night. Mm -hmm.